Hey, how's it going? Nice fine day out here. This is Troy with Big BB LLC. I'm going to warn you right off the hand. This one's probably going to be a little longer one than I normally do. Um, only because I think it's that important. All right, what I'm going to talk about today are deceptive practices in advertising. And I have one great example that I can use right here in my own local county. Um, every single one of these come from the Square County Auction who seems to specialize in deceptive advertising and practices. So, that's uh, well, not really a good thing. Um, and it shouldn't surprise anybody that he does this. The guy's also running for supervisor right here in District 2 of Leake County as a Democrat. Democrat, deception, I don't know. There might be a connection between that. All right, But, that's what goes on, and so I'm hoping to at least open your eyes onto how the deception is being put on display and uh, how it works so you guys can avoid either overpaying for something that you think is rare or that they're saying has good book value when it doesn't or that they're saying is functioning when it's not. And I have three perfectly good examples of that right here, actually. But first, what I do want to do is I want to get through the boring part, right? So let's get through the boring part. This is the actual Mississippi Rules of Conduct for auctioneers. Um, rule 1.2, Advertising, Part B. It shall be a violation of these rules for an auctioneer or auction firm to permit its name or license number to appear on any advertisement for an auction without reviewing the contents of the advertisement prior to its publication to a certain to ascertain its compliance with applicable laws and rules all right so basically he's got to check over this stuff first before he allows his license number to be applied to it now if you go to a site he does not have his license number attached to anything he puts out on social media even though it's completely um, states right here rules and uh, regulations applying to advertising and proper disclosure include advertisements on television radio newspaper and other media such as social media all right so one the rule applies to every type of marketing and advertisement that he does two he's got to actually go in there and confirm that everything is true before he puts his license number on it um, we already know that he doesn't put his license number on anything. But, C, any advertisements for an auction must identify the name and license number of the auctioneer or auction firm who will be conducting the auction business. So even there, he's out of compliance. Not putting his number on his own advertisements. All right, But let's look past all that. Let's just say that's all small potatoes. Because it is. It's small potatoes. They get a slap on the wrist for it, whatever. False, deceptive, misleading, and untruthful advertising is expressly prohibited. Any advertisement or advertising shall be deemed shall be deemed to be false, deceptive, misleading, or untruthful if it contains misrepresentations of fact misleading or deceptive because its contents or its context it makes only a partial disclosure of relevant facts creates false or unjustified expectations of the services to be performed contains any misrepresentation or claim which the advertising licensee fails to perform and advertises an auction as absolute when any portion to be sold is subject to confirmation or with reserve or with minimum bids blah 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 right so let's talk about some of that stuff um, and I've got pictures of his tags and stuff here too so let's get into it right none of these things that I have here none of these things that I'm about to show you were tagged as non-functioning missing parts or otherwise broken Here is an AHSS FX9 FXS9 uh, from American Tactical. They were the importer of this. They weren't the actual manufacturer. This was actually made in Turkey, which is why I have this now because 
You cannot find parts for this. They do not import parts. This is now a parts gun. It will not work. Why? There's no extractor, there's no spring, there's no plunger, there's just a big hole where that should be. And he sold it as new in box. So that's deceptive right there. Now, you'll, you'll probably go on and say, well, the guy probably doesn't know. He's an auctioneer, not a gun guy. I do want you to know that this dude has a pawn shop that he owns. He is an FFL, so he probably moves more guns in a month than I see in a year. And he's been doing it probably as long as I've been alive. So not knowing isn't going to be really a credible argument for this guy right now. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to see there's a big hole there where something should be there, like an extractor. You don't have to be a genius to see that there is a bulge in this barrel and is probably unsafe to shoot. Now to the guy's credit, I did buy this one off of him. The guy actually came back and he gave him back the money, which is actually rare. And I bought this off of him to practice gunsmithing. But the fact that he sold it as a functioning, safe, working, reliable firearm in the first place, kind of deceptive. And honestly, don't think that everyone's going to get their money back, because they're not. Not with this guy, all right? He tells you right at the front end of his auctions um, that, uh, you know, if it's not working or something's broken, don't come to me. Even though he's the one that's responsible for it, he's the one that's supposed to put his license number on it, he's the one that's supposed to check it, he won't accept any responsibility for it. So that one, he actually did the right thing, and he gave the guy his money back. So I will give him credit for that, right? And then we got this lovely Model 97 Winchester. You don't need to be a genius to know that ain't right. This should not do that. It should not stay there. You do not have to go out there and fire test every single gun that he's gotten in his auction. No one is expecting him to take it all the way down and make sure that every firing pin isn't broke. But at least do your function check. Oh crap, that's not supposed to do that. You know what? We can't sell this. Or if we do, we need to advertise it and sell it as a defective item, right? Even then. But there would be no money in selling this as a defective item, would there? All right? So let me see here. I got some pictures I'm going to throw up as well, and I'll probably I'll expand them out so you guys can read what the tag says. Um... Here's one right here. New in box, 9mm, high point, AR style. AR style high point. This is a high point. Magazine. In the, in the handle here, 9mm, high point. This is an AR. There is nothing, nothing AR style about a high point. The high point doesn't have two different receivers that you can disconnect. The high point doesn't have anything associated with an AR. There is nothing AR style about them. Oh, but he just doesn't know what he's talking about, right? You'd think after that many years of working with guns, he would know a little bit more about them, right? However, let's talk about the, where's it at? AR-15 Radical, new in box. Again, everything's new in box, apparently. Good book, hard to find, 6.5 Grendel. This is one that's hanging on my wall for sale right now. Do you know what this is chambered in? 6.5 Grendel. Matter of fact, if you go to my online store, you'll probably see 11 different manufacturers right now selling a 6.5 Grendel AR style rifle. About 11 of them. They are not hard to find, right? That's a deceptive wording practice right there.
What's the uh, newest one he had this coming up week? Oh, here's one. Glock. New in box. Model 43X. 380 cal. Whoa. Glock 43s. This one's my wife, so that's why it's pink. Glock 43s do not come in 380. Matter of fact, if you look at it here on the slide... It says 9x19. Glock 43s are 9mm. Glock 17s are 9mm. Glock 19s are 9mm. Glock 43s are not 380. If you put a 380 in there, you're probably asking for a little bit of trouble, right? And I even had someone ask me, hey, is it possible that that could have been modded? The barrel could have been replaced and modded to accept the 380. I don't know anyone that's done it, but if it was, it wouldn't be new in box either, would it? So again, deceptive practices in advertising, right? And it's not like the guy doesn't know. I've went to his auctions before, and I have even told him. I've offered to help him. Hey, look, call me. I'll look them over for you. I'll help you tag these right. So that way, you know, you're actually giving good information to people. Again, there's no money in telling the truth. Even though being an honest businessman is 100% free, He chooses not to do the right thing, all right? And so this is why I kind of put this together for you. I want you to be safe. I don't want you to buy stuff like this that may or may not blow up in your face. I want you to be safe, and I want you to go out there, and I want you to feel like you actually got a good deal when you do make a deal, right? And that's why here at Big BBLLC, we do not deal in dis... Um, and deceptive practices if it's good I'm gonna tell you if it's good if it's bad I probably don't carry it if it's bad why would I sell stuff that I think is bad minus this high point nine mil but honestly they're they're uh their carbines are actually good to go it's their pistols I actually have a problem with all right but we don't deal in deceptive practices so I actually put it out there on my uh on my uh, business page on Facebook and I'm gonna put it out here as well if you go there if you go to this auction and you buy a firearm because I'm not discouraging anyone from doing that that is that would be un-American of me if you want to go there and get a firearm without having to do a background check there you go that's probably the most American thing I can think of is government don't need to know shit right until the three-letter agency kicks your door in but eh, you worry about that bridge when you cross it um, but if you go there Bring the firearm to me, and I will look it over for you, free of charge. All I ask is that you leave the tag on. If you buy a firearm, and it is broken or defective in any way, bring it with the tag on it, and I will fix it for the cost of parts only. I will not include labor or anything like that. All right? So that is my, um, that is my way to reaching back out and say, look, I don't really need to make money on this. All I care about is that you're safe. All I care about is that gun does not blow up in your face. That's all I really care about. Money is second to me, but to some guys who uh, practice deceptive um, and false advertising, they don't care about you. All they care about is your dollar. And if you come out of there with a broken or defective firearm, I mean, you worked hard for your money. Don't give it to guys like that, all right? Anyway, I'm here for you. If you got any more questions for me, um, let me know. I will be posting more of these as I get them. Um, and I've posted one in the past on an 870 shotgun. And you know what? I'll throw the picture of what that shotgun looked like when it got to me. It's crazy how it could be that broken. And he still sell it as a perfectly functioning firearm. Anyway, stay safe. Shoot straight. If you got any questions, reach out to me. If you need any help, reach out to me. I'm not I don't know it all, but I'll do what I can. All right? We'll see you.